Thanks for the camera Mara Titla might saw it. Might saw it. I 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 Channel one la huh? Channel one la in kela. Oh, channel one. Channel one. Speaker channel. Hey, mic channel hai toh. One to four more. Hello, hello, mic test. Hello. Hello, mic test. Nahi hai toh. No, Pandri. Hello, my Hello, Hello, my Hello. Hi, the camera, my camera. What is it? The camera is manual. Channel one and the channel one. After coming, channel one. It's over. Ah, I'm coming. I'm Hello, hello, Mike. 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 Hello, hello, Okay, okay. It was for a Madam, शुरू कर रहे थे दोन मिनट तक
Which uh, session, session two? Session two, right? This is my name. This is this is four. May I know your name, please? Sumash Rao. Session two, one thirty-four. Session two. One zero three is not a part of this one, sir. No. You know the other one. No, it's a uh, call number four. Call number four. When we are paper number twenty-eight. Paper number twenty-eight. Paper number twenty-eight. No. Yeah, that should be coordinating me if uh, a participant is coming in. And what is the name of the sir who is coordinating? Niranjan, uh, second Deepak Singh. Yeah, we are here today. Who is there? Deepak Singh. Deepak Singh. Niranjan. We'll have to wait for you. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? You're here for the latest session. So that is started. Uh, no, yeah, one is asking oh, oh, yeah. Other online, no, online. In this particular one, we do not have any online presentation. Okay, like that. Okay. 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 Okay.
Bring together hands to power to inspire, to connect, and to deliver on new opportunities. And each experience that can open the doors for innovation and progress while growing global economics and increasing well being. With this poll, I, Dr. Pia Pise, Professor and Head of the Department of Artificial Intelligence and Data Science at Dr. Deepa Patil Vidya B. Also, I take a pride in saying that I am a senior IGPD member. would like to extend my warm welcome to our session chair for the day, Dr. Shraddha Pansalga, and to each one of you who is excited to present your paper or a research work. I now take an opportunity to invite and welcome our session chair, Dr. Shraddha Zansarkar. She is professor and head of computer science and engineering at MIT ADT University, whose area of interest is blockchain center of excellence, who is leading blockchain center of excellence. So we must appreciate Madam for that. Uh, she is a certified blockchain professional and trainer as well. So we are fortunate to have her here. I request Dr. Amar Puchade, sir, to kindly felicitate Madam and welcome her for the session. Can we have a photograph, please? Thank you. A round of applause for her. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you, sir. Sir and ma'am, with your permission, we would like to begin the session. Thank you. So I request the first participant who is here, Mr. Satendra Swain, and whose topic of discussion is a distributed agent oriented framework for blockchain enabled supply chain management. Over to you, Sapendra. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm and hearty good morning to one and all. Today, in this wonderful morning, I, Mr. Satyananda Swami, a PhD scholar from the Department of Computer Science of Parampur University, Orissa, is available to give a presentation on my research topic, that is, a distributed agent-oriented framework for blockchain enabled supply chain management. This particular work is supervised by my mentor, my guide, Professor Dr. Manasranjan Patro of Parampu University, Orissa, and he is also the co-author of this paper with me. In my entire presentation, these are the content I'd like to cover, starting from introduction till conclusion, followed by some references. So without much delay, let's begin the presentation with the introduction. This research work is actually an amalgamation of three different, three distinct prospective 
two from the vicinity of computer science and engineering as blockchain and multi-agent system and one from the city of business world that is supply chain management if you want to understand my research work then definitely as a prerequisite you have to understand the fundamental idea of these three aspects so let's i introduce you all to these three fundamental principles so what a blockchain is a blockchain is a distributed linked data structure that is characterized by its inherent resistance to data modification it is akin to a distributed ledger that is capable of maintaining continuously going records of digital transactions which are accessible and visible to multiple participants in a network while keeping them secure enough. If I'm coming towards the supply chain, then we can say that a supply chain model is a structured way of product or service movement by or at different transactional point to multiple different stakeholders or participants. Ethics define supply chain management as a process of design, planning, execution, control, and monitoring of supply chain activity to create a net value. And that is by building a competitive infrastructure, by leveraging the worldwide logistic and synchronizing the supply with the demand, and finally measuring the performance globally. And for that reason, nowadays, blockchain and supply chains are combined together as a single unit. Mostly in blockchain-based supply chain, different events are occurring. And among those events, some events like trade, ownership, and most probably the location data are hashed together and linked with blockchain transactions using smart contract. And what a smart contract is, a smart contract is a digital contract between two parties through blockchain. Now I'm migrating into the third aspect that is software agent. A software agent is an autonomous entity which is equipped with a knowledge base and it is driven by a self-developed or induced objective. But I'm not just going to talk about software agents, but I'm going to talk about multiple software agents which are available in a distributed environment and they are loosely coupled to provide all the activities of the supply chain in a distributed structure. So now the question comes up, what motivates us to bring this concept to this particular conference? Actually, while going through the literature survey and finding out the exploration related to supply chain area, I get it found that many different issues available in currently available supply chain management systems. Some of the issues are like coordination, collaboration, security, scalability, transparency, and trustworthiness, and even resilience. Some researchers working with finding the solution through multi-agent system, some are trying to provide the solution through blockchain activity. That grabbed the attention of me and my guide towards this prospective. So what we are trying to do is to combine the benefits of multi-agent system and the benefits of blockchain technology combined together to a single unit and trying to solve the available issues of supply chain management systems. That's why what is the motivation to us that we are trying to develop a software agent oriented framework where a set of interactive agents will be available and those interactive agents try to find out all the activity in a distributed structure and provide whatever maximum profit in terms of performance to the to the stakeholder at a secure platform and that's the motivation let's move on to the objectives so here the objective defines that we are interested to analyze the key requirements of blockchain enabled supply chain and try to develop a software agent oriented framework so that we can meet to the requirement. Majorly, we are intended to find out how we can improve the performance in terms of four to five specification like transparency, traceability, security, and even resilience. In addition to that, few more intended research questions I tried to solve. The first one is how software agents can be adopted for automatic process execution in supply chain management. The second one is 
what are the different prospective of smart contracts implementation these software agent can possible to provide and how I can get all the transactions to be laid down as per the rules and regulation mentioned in the smart contract. The last two questions related to guaranteeing traceability and how agent can be effectively used for transaction control and monitoring. So let's understand the problem domain in detail. So when we talk about supply chain process, it is actually a sequence of process flow taking place between different stages that all together help to satisfy the customer's need. Whatever supply chain is possible to get, mostly they are dealing with four distinct pages. And they are, first one is customer order cycle, second one is replenishment order cycle, third one is manufacturing cycle, and the last one is procurement cycle. The customer order cycle actually behaves as an interface between the customer and the retailer. And all the activities starting from the customer reaching to the retailer and the customer getting the product, all the activities is under the cycle called the customer order cycle. The second one is replenishment order cycle, which behaves as an interface between a retailer and a distributor. When we talk about retailer and distribution, mostly this activity related to inventory management. Let's talk about the manufacturing cycle, which talk, which gives a complete idea of how the product is being manufactured and delivered to the distributor and being preserved in the inventory for later on future. And lastly, procurement cycle, which says that manufacturer is going to get the raw material supply on time so that the manufacturing operations can be smoothly conducted. So here comes the proposed framework. This is my design of the framework, which can be differentiated into two distinct aspects. The right half is representing the business perspective, and the left half is going to represent the computational integration. So I'm going to explain the computational integration that this whole framework is designed and controlled and monitored under one specific agent named as the agent or preeminent supply chain agent. Under that particular agent, there are four subordinate agents available who is who are handling individual operations distinctively. So as who is handling supply operation, he is being or that agent is being named as S agent. Manufacturing operation managed by M agent, distribution one by D agent, and lastly, retail operation is managed by R agent. Now, the blockchain <coughs> unit or blockchain part comes into the play. So, what happened? Whatever transaction is going to be carried on, the entire transaction needs to be carried on as per the rules and regulation mentioned in the smart contract. And for that reason, individual blockchains are going to be handled by individual smart contract for each individual stages. And that's why four subordinate smart contract available and there is a superordinate smart contract who is controlling the whole supply chain operation. So instead of just working on blockchains, we are going to work on blockchain of blockchain, popularly named as UBs. So let's find out each individual agents with their description. So the preeminent supply chain agent is actually the controller and monitor of every aspect of supply chain, okay? And in case of P agent, it is not just monitoring, it is not just performing the product delivery task. Our major focus is on finding quality. And for that, it's not just the product, the process automation, and how the process is being carried out, whether the process is being carried out perfectly or not. And if the process carried out perfectly by whom, by whom and at which time the operation is performed, entire aspect need to be preserved so that anybody can look at it and find out whether the product is being accurately being validated in the way or not. The second one is supplier agent, whose major task is for controlling and monitoring supply operation. Likewise, manufacturing agent, distributor agent, and retailer agent. Here, I'm just going to show you the basic glimpse of this particular smart contract. So you can have a look upon that preeminent supply chain smart contract, then supply operation smart contract, 
manufacturing operation smart contract, civil management operation smart contract, and the last one is retail operation management smart contract. So how the framework works? At this point, I'm going to say that my framework and the total system consisting of many agents and smart contract and the whole operation performed by moving from one state to another state, or you can say that the total system consisting of multiple states or phases. We have six phases starting from initiative to supply, supply to manufacture, manufacture to distribute, then to retail, and the last one is operation closer. Instead of just the description, let's have the state transition diagram. So this diagram specifies that when we start up at that point of time, there is an initiation of different agent rules. And we say that the dynamic process of execution starts. And this dynamic behavior starts with five first initiating the role of B agent and all other agents. At every stage, only three agents are possible to be available in its instant variable. And that's why I use the term called AR, that is allowed role, and AIR, that is allowed instant roles that are available for that particular phase. So from initiator to supply, there are three agents being active, P for the preeminent, S for the supplier agent, and M for the manufacturing agent. The P agent send a signal to the supplier agent who initiate the supply operation by calling the function supply agent manage operation. In that particular operation, we have the smart contract being executed and the smart contract perform the whole operation in stage by stage. After the stage is being completed, a feedback is given from the transaction to the P agent that the operation has been finished. If at any stage the operation is being blocked, then an alarming symbol or alarming status is being returned as a feedback to a P agent. Likewise, from supply, we move to manufacture, from manufacture, we move to distributed, then to retail, and lastly, the operation closer. The operation closer say that all the operation and its values that are being assigned for the instant rules are released and the supply chain operation is closed at that end. So here I'm going to show you the sequence diagram available. The sequence diagram starts with the system monitoring by receiving the order and finally it ends with the order closed. And this sequence diagram actually depicted to formal specification and this is my finding that is the algorithm. The algorithm is consisting of or the consisting of near about 30 plus steps and we have the three conditions as that definitely the order received from the customers, the status must be at the beginning should be initiated by the P agent and the third aspect is the operational roles uh, must be assigned to individual agent respectively as per their operation. So this algorithm is dealing with the function P operation manage which control and monitor the total supply chain operation activity, which is monitored and maintained by P agent. Over here, when we start, the status symbol is at initiated state, and we receive the order from the customer. Then the supplier agent is going to call its function SOP manage, and it receives two parameters. One is the supplier address, one is the manufacturer address. Based on this, the total operation or transactional work is going to be carried out. And when the operation is finished, the finished status is being delivered to the status symbol supply underscore status. And in this order, the entire supplier, manufacturer, distributed, and the other operations are being carried out. That's fine. Yes, fine. Yeah. So now it comes up to that the algorithm is being available. How do we implement? So the implementation is through an agent by simulation platform and the coding language that is for agent development I have used is Python. The second aspect that is the blockchain implementation, I have chosen the Ethereum platform for developing the blockchain aspect and Solidity is the language that I have used. To do the coding of smart contract, I have used Remix ID 
and currently we are moving from this open source to Azure platform for blockchain implementation. Then the third aspect is how we coordinate these two aspects to combine into a single unit. And for that, Web3.5 is a package or library which is available to coordinate the front end with the back end. Now, let's talk about the efficacy of the proposed system. Efficacy can be evaluated from three perspectives. One is operational traceability, one is transparency, and the third one is scalability. In all the cases, our major focus is on operational traceability, if not just tracing the product being reached to the customer, but tracing how the process is being carried on so that the quality can be maintained and everybody can see it, what the quality is and how the quality range is being reached. Then the second one is transparency, that everybody should get a chance to know what the transaction is going on and how it is being performed. And lastly, secure your scalability is actually an alarm that can be handled by a smart contract and through any concept, we can deal with it. So you can know that no system is perfect. So definitely some limitations are available and the limitations are the entire aspect is controlled by the agent. And for that reason, we say that if anything happened or anything failure related to this particular P agent, then definitely I was able to work with the supply chain management. Then definitely validation and verification is also an issue related to blockchain nodes, transaction and implementation, and what kind of consensus mechanism that we should take that is definitely a topic task. Security can also be enhanced in this framework. Now we are working on that particular aspect. And the last one is integrating this framework to the currently available legacy system is definitely going to be one of the toughest tasks for me. So what are the future? Then definitely I'm saying that we are gearing towards achieving better traceability, better transparency, and the highest security that we can reach. The second aspect is we are intended to develop or deploy software agent from a strategic point of view. Then final future work is developing a proper formal specification, detailed algorithm, and finally, the performance measure that can be helping us to modify the framework to its betterment. So at last, I'm going to conclude that blockchain technology has emerged as a promising tool. It actually geared towards streamlining the internal and external processes of the organization. At this point, I can say that blockchain technology helps us to remove inefficiency, improve transparency, and ease of monitoring. Likewise, if I'm talking about software agents, then they are quite successful as a programming paradigm to automate the process and try to minimize human interventions and decision making. So the end product of this particular research work is a software agent oriented framework for maintaining blockchain enabled supply chain management. And that's why I call it as an engineer melee. An engineer melee. That's the end. So these are the references I took for preparing the slides and the paper. And now the topic is open for discussion. I'd love to answer your queries if you have any. Thank you. Thank you very much. With a very well uh, articulated presentation. First of all, congratulations for that. Thank you, uh, I have two, two to three technical queries. Yes, uh, the first uh, query is about your uh, comment that you made that you plan to build a blockchain of blockchains. Yes, ma'am. Um, whereas right now, what I see is um, maybe uh, it's just a single blockchain uh, BOC implementation on Ethereum blockchain. So uh, my question is, how do you plan to uh, envisage this blockchain of blockchain uh, concept? Whether you go for homogeneous blockchains there or you plan to go for heterogeneous blockchains where you know, a supplier could be built or supplier blockchain could be Ethereum or manufacturer could be a hyperledger fabric block. So how, how do you envis envision this kind of concept? Thank you, Ma'am, for the question. Uh, actually, ma'am, when we started with this particular framework, at that point of time, we planned with Linux. Linux IDE for solidity for making a presentation with Ethereum. 
Now, as I have said already, that we are migrating to the cloud environment of Azure. We are going to try that for each individual smart contract, we will prepare one particular blockchain. And now for each individual smart contract, the nodes are going to be get added as per the terms and condition. And the four smart contract we develop, they will dealing with four different blockchains. And the final superior smart contract, that is PC smart contract we have developed, that will be a homogeneous one. And it is having every aspect related to the other four subordinate smart contract and the blockchain. So my major work is we are going to develop a cloud infrastructure, which is going to deal with the hyperledgers at the superior level, which is homogeneous. But for each individual aspect that is available for smart contract for supply, manufacture, retail, and the distribution will be four different distinct heterogeneous one. That will be my technical prospective map. Uh, it's a great uh, uh, my only concern is uh, because this happens to be a PNP research. Yes, ma'am. My suggestion would be uh, better stick to the homogeneous blockchain platforms. Uh, yes, ma'am. To get the first level results. Uh, and uh, secondly, also, if uh, you could speak about performance metrics in terms of scalability. Yes, Because these are the, you know, uh, Points when it comes to blockchain implementation. Yes, ma'am. So I think uh, once the POC is in shape, yes, uh, you're talking about the actual performance metrics in terms of gas, cost, and yes, scalability. I think that would make a wonderful contribution. Actually, currently, when we are talking about the scalability aspect, the smart contract is going to use ethers. So how the ether is being transformed when the transaction is being carried on and what kind of metrics we can implement so that we can directly make the stakeholders to look at to the metrics and evaluate the performance. That is our concern. But at this point of work, I'm completely relying on one particular smart contract that my work is already completed for supply operation. And when in the course of time I will carry on, definitely the whole work I'm going to confine to a whole operation. But the agent development is already done now and the traceability is completely done. I have already submitted the paper and traceability matrix I have already prepared and the traceability matrix is through traceability threshold calculation and the average threshold is going to help me to identify whether the process is being carried out nicely or not. So that aspect up to that I have completed that and I'm expecting I may possibly to complete. Thank you. Congratulations and all the best. Thank you very much for the So everybody, thank you very much for your patience and listening. And I'm really thankful to the conference for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Why do you want to do the open source available? So when we are doing that, most of the time, in most of the processes, they are asking questions related to security issues and just to rely on a particular secure platform and trying to migrate to a geo one. So this by agent and the blog one, that's why I'm moving. There is no specific uh, particular technical reason for that. Just to assure to the questioners that yeah, the security can be achieved at the cloud level, I go for cloud infrastructure. In terms of your computing costs, have you compared costs between the multiple cloud environments available? Uh, at this point in time, multiple cloud environment available, but mostly the, the easiest one to achieve is Azure. That's why I'm talking about that. So, okay, maybe you can do some more research. Every cloud is easier in you. Uh, yes, sir. In terms of the services that are sir, uh, I'm talking about the payment uh, orientation. Right. It's, right. it's on that basis only. Because uh, currently, when you are at PhD, you have to be minimized with little bit of funds only. Right. And when I will continue <coughs> after my PhD, definitely I will try for some better, more secure platform with sufficient amount of uh, uh, money. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. When yeah. it comes to supply chain, there are certain key challenges that supply chain faces, faces even today. Yeah. Like which key problems you are going to solve? Of course, blockchain of course, some things. So when we say these are things that we are going to solve in terms of transparency and blah blah blah. Yeah. Which key problems you are going to address with this? 
uh, sir, solution. with uh, my solution, the first, uh, the first aspect is traceability. That is the first aspect. And most of the supply chain environment, they are dealing with product traceability. 99% of the supply chain orientation is not with process traceability. So my one is focusing on process traceability. The second aspect I'm dealing with is agent-oriented trustness. That how we can trust an agent whether the operation has been performed perfectly through the agent supervision. That is second. And if time permit within my PhD work, then I will go for resilience management related to fault tolerance. These are the three aspects I'm going to deal with. Okay, great. Thank you very much, sir, for the question. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Satendra. Thank you, ma'am. Now, let me go to the next paper presenter, Mr. Parts, Mr. Mangesh, and Mr. Somnath. In the title, Blockchain Assisted Secure Outsourced Database Search. Over to you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, myself, Pasarthi Chakravarti. So, my uh, presentation and that is uh, PSDB, Blockchain Assisted Secure Outsourcing Data Search. That is jointly worked with Pushpish Kumar Mangesh and uh, Sonat Tripathi at uh, IIT Patna. Our guide is Sonat Tripathi, sir. So, my presentation outlined uh, with uh, different aspects, uh, mainly basically four. So, first one is the introduction and try to explain you what we are going to do. Next one is uh, regarding the encrypted data, how the search will perform there, and how next one is how blockchain helps us here. And finally, our proposed uh, scheme that we're going to discuss <laughs> with results. So, first thing is that uh, we are aware of uh, these kind of reports that uh, large number of uh, data breaches are reported. Even in lockdown, you identify that uh, one uh, important news regarding the Air India, that your information is already kept and uh, it is gone to the attack. And other than that, your Facebook information. And uh, recently, one another one is reported that almost 2,000 data which is reported still first, of, uh, first half of this year. So because of these reasons, it also increases your uh, uh, costing of uh, uh, providing security to 13% higher from the 2022-2022. So what is the solution here? What can we think about that? How we protect our data? Okay. So solution will be encrypted search. Now it is a very popular topic. It is uh, since uh, uh, it is uh, more than 20 years it is going on. Different type of aspects is considered here for the encrypted search. It is from the database to the files. So many companies are involved in this kind of uh, services provided that. So it is one of the solutions. So there are different type of solution techniques are there. It is based on mainly two things. Basically, one is uh, that if I perform a search over outsourced database, then I need the efficient, efficiency. So if I put a query there, then it provides uh, within a time limit to provide the result. So time limit must be it's like, like Google search you perform it and you provide a uh, certain you provide the result. So another parameter is leakage. So if I outsource our database, it must be not accessed by any intruder or attacker. So there are different type of uh, solutions available, oblivious RIM and uh, fully homomorphic encryption. So these two techniques are very uh, good in terms of uh, protecting your uh, data. But in case of efficiency, it's very slow. And whereas uh, we have the other algorithms uh, that deterministic encryption and uh, PP based uh, encryptions. So they are good in terms of providing you the efficiency that you're providing a good result, but they are suffering from leakage abuse attack. Leakage abuse, uh, abuse attack here, they can read your query. Anyhow, they can identify 
by something in for the information by simply compare by uh, sending some data and getting the output in this way they are uh, in for your queries even the data that uh, the company stored there in the clouds uh, so uh, finally the best solution what is the best solution here so best solution uh, still uh, the researcher try to identify but uh, one one is that uh, ssc based uh, algorithm they at least provide uh, in terms of efficiency is good uh, in terms of leakage it is uh, uh, in terms of leakage it is better than deterministic algorithm so we are concerning on the ssc based uh, solution we develop our algorithm that scheme it is according to ssc based uh, solution now uh, this is a, a um, uh, simply an idea about how the search can perform over the encrypted data. So, so there are three entities. I hope everyone uh, it is visible to you that first one is the data owner, either a company or you or anyone or the uh, institute. They simply whatever the data they have, they simply encrypted by some means of algorithm. And before encrypted your data, you must generate your uh, index because uh, it's not possible to perform search over the data. You need an index so it will be fast uh, search that these kind of uh, keywords are available with this file can easily search so before encrypted your data you first uh, uh, generate an index and then convert it uh, index in encrypted form so both your data encrypted data and encrypted uh, index you just simply outsource it to the cloud server so whatever uh, the cloud service available that you can use now, next one is uh, that uh, suppose data user want to search over it in the cloud server. So he uh, is an authorized, uh, most importantly, he must be an authorized user. So he aware of uh, what type of data is going to search. If it's a medical data, so he's going to search over the medical data. So he will access uh, that company data. So he simply uh, convert his keyword into a word or a query. And simply send it to the cloud server. Now, cloud server has its encrypted data and the encrypted query. So now they simply try to match this encrypted query with the encrypted index. If somewhere they identify that they are matching, they will provide all the related files information. It may be a file identifier name or um, your uh, full file information to the data user. Now, here are some concerns. First issue is that uh, information leakage. Suppose a keyword it is encrypted and it is uh, sent to the cloud server. So maybe they try to identify the search pattern. How they identify the search pattern? Suppose you search uh, initially mango. Okay, mango is a keyword you are encrypted and sent, and it sends some results. All are encrypted. Again, you send some. Again, you uh, search for mango after uh, later on few times. Then. It again give the result. So maybe he compare, try to compare. Or another thing is that if you have a some information available in a domain outside domain, so maybe predict that this kind of data is uh, uh, in the cloud server. Another one is access pattern. So find whatever sent as a result. Maybe understand that if this kind of query comes, these kind of results is produced uh, to the data user. So it's a really a concern how we protect it. Next one is a uh, cloud server behavior. So there are uh, two types of behavior. One is honest versus uh, curious. Honest means he will perform all the uh, uh, all the um, steps in the protocol that you have provided. But he is curious about your results. So what type of results you are doing? He's simply uh, monitoring it. Next one is malicious. Malicious means he perform any type of operation over your data. So they try to infer it. Like it generate the status, whatever the status is available, it simply perform the operation there and generate some new sets by using some data. Finally, the privacy of your data, how you protect your data. So these are the three basic concerns, and I try to explain you that how the uh, basic uh, search over the outsourced data. Next one is related work. So my work is on the database uh, rows. I'm not. Uh, this uh, presentation is not related to the files. So what we identify that initially it is a uh, like 2000 um, year, the song, the author introduced the idea of the secure outsource data. He give, uh, she given many things, many information on how we generate the index and all that. 
So uh, next one is uh, that one who's given the encrypted outsource database scheme and ensure that uh, confidentiality of sensitive data. But still, uh, he's not given many things uh, like uh, he, I made the idea of uh, given the verified database, uh, but it still not work there. Finally, uh, your MySQL is supported by some hardware, SGX. So these are the related work are given, but our idea is that how without uh, using some hardware, we can protect our uh, database uh, rows so that we can easily and outsource it and easily search over it. Next one is how I, we motivated there. First one is that everyone knows that uh, cloud servers does not provide any assurance related to the confidentiality, correctness, and privacy. So this is the main concern. Can we and come to your solution? Yes, ma'am. I'm jumped there. Yeah, we are very much excited. Uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, final thing is uh, we use the blockchain uh, technology advantage. So our goal mainly focus on these five points. One is confidentiality that I discussed. Data integrity, anyhow, we are not uh, change the your data query or the uh, reserves or even the data. Trap load unlimited means uh, whatever the encrypted query have generated, the your uh, uh, trap uh, your uh, adversary are not a binary relation between these two things. Final <coughs> query unforgeability. So adversary not able to generate a new query which is similar to your old query of any other user. So <laughs> finally, was the leakage resistance. We provide the leakage resistance against the search and access pattern. So it is our model here, uh, three entity, as I said. So what we did here that uh, data on send the encrypted index in the blockchain and encrypted database in the cloud server. And it is a SSC scheme and a secure channel through they share the authorized user to the keys. Final uh, thing is that user will send a search token, he's got the search result. For such result in terms of your ID's number, and he encrypted one and he requested finally to the cloud server, it will provide it to the data. Now, these are the major uh, function related to it. So, this is a schematic diagram. What we uh, did here that uh, data owner, uh, owner generated the uh, key, then encrypted data index with that I have already discussed, and uh, Finally, uh, if you see that uh, data is, uh, user will generate a trap code and it's sent to the blockchain. Blockchain performs the search. Here we have write the smart contract for the search algorithm and then it provides the result to the data user. Now, how we build the index? Uh, we simply using the MD5 hash algorithm here in the primary ID and we use uh, uh, the sort plus the key. So to try to generate the IDs for them. Next one is the trap to uh, generate. What we did is uh, we take the hash key plus uh, a random string of uh, Q length, it is between the 0 to 4 and 256 uh, database we have taken. Next one is the search. How we uh, perform the search is that we simply compare with the encrypted keyword and encrypted uh, row uh, information. And uh, if I identify that these two uh, row uh, primary key is uh, matching, then we simply uh, send the files. So these are files are uh, file identifier, and we added some random dummy sort so that it not uh, uh, means the size of uh, your uh, result will be same. And each time you perform a search, the size of your uh, result will be same. Even the keyword case, we I have done the same. The length is same means whenever you send a query, its length is same. And if, if you send a manual keyword, convert it. Okay, if you send a query. It's size same. Next time you search my code, it's size. Even you search something else, the size will be same. So to protect the search and access patterns. Now uh, this is a cloud storage. So how we store the information there in the cloud database. And uh, whenever we find the uh, ID from the cloud server, we simply first decrypt it, again encrypt and send to the cloud and provide the result. This is our result. Uh, we are not able to compare uh, with any other paper. It is uh, due to that uh, many of the papers are uh, related to the some specialized hardware for the databases, not the simple things or the old papers are many have issues. So we try to protect the access there. And even thing is our paper new, what is new here is a blockchain. So blockchain we have used uh, to take the help of uh, its uh, advantages. So we are not able to compare the, these things. And it's the result, uh, and more importantly, uh, we have used uh, uh, the Zomato database after refining. We got the 5000 data, and it is our uh, 
uh, searching speed that uh, shown here. So how much overhead we have for the communication channel it is shown. And finally, how much uh, uh, gas is it consuming? Uh, we have implemented both in the Robson and uh, Tanky Bike, and the gas information is given. Finally, uh, that uh, I already told that uh, it's not uh, it's a limit, the time limitation. So I only say that uh, we achieve the two things. First one is the uh, search uh, access uh, search and the access pattern resistance, so that uh, there is no leakage in that case. And finally, in whatever the algorithm we have used, uh, that complexity we have given. And uh, finally, what we conclude that uh, first we take the advantage of the blockchain in the for the encrypted uh, database. We work with the database only, where this reach is not to the file purpose, and we achieve both the pattern leakage and access pattern leakage. And it is supported by Matrix uh, Sir uh, the project. Thank you. These are the references. And uh, welcome to the topic that you have chosen has aroused interest in the mind of I think everybody here. In fact, I was waiting for the solution to come. Uh, uh, so, first of all, let me congratulate on the choice of the uh, topic that you have expert presented here. And uh, Coming to your solution, your proposed solution, uh, I have few technical queries. Number one uh, is uh, you said you are exploiting the features of blockchain, and there is a search of uh, encrypted index that you're doing on blockchain. Uh, my first uh, question to you is rather a submission that blockchain itself uh, poses challenges to a search. So a search on a blockchain is not an issue. So why is blockchain chosen to be, uh, you know, blockchain could be used as a security, secure storage. So do you propose to use blockchain for search? That's my first question. And my second question is, why is the choice of cloud done? Why couldn't we go for any non-cloud blockchain events? Okay, first I try to give the second question answer. Why we uh, go for the cloud? It is that uh, in current scenario, cloud is very much popular. And in offline, it is uh, means uh, we are talking about some uh, hyperledger thing or the private environment where the specialized only specific users can access. We want that those like government, government provides some support to the public. So for that case, so we uh, need cloud environment. If I if I take uh, the advantage of a particular company, maybe a cost. But if we take the advantage of cloud and we only store the data and take the work from the searching work from uh, your cloud to the blockchain, it quite uh, means uh, in terms of financially it is really good. And uh, thing is that one more and uh, easiest answer is that uh, we uh, means uh, recent days many companies are going to the. Uh, take the advantage of uh, blockchain. Blockchain, first thing is that it generates the blocks. So blocks informations are not, you can, not able to change. One is generate to generate. Now, blockchain informations, if are not able to change, then the cloud have some problem. Cloud are very curious about information. So malicious is not provide the uh, result. Now, in that situation, blockchain is suitable. Blockchain will provide you the result in terms of whatever protocol you have defined and it added to the block. So it here, these are the advantages. And uh, uh, finally, you can say that uh, that uh, whatever the work uh, we have uh, done, it is uh, we concern that uh, <coughs> that cloud, uh, cloud server provides uh, many leakages issues. So always some attacks are done and the data will be that. So we only store the data and searching issue is not there. So less information provided to the cloud server, less uh, monitoring by the cloud server. So we take the advantage of the blockchain. Any question from audience? So uh, I think I agree with Matt. Uh, I still didn't get why blockchain is important here because 
do you know the current security practices available uh, in order to you know secure your data in terms of uh, you know, uh, encryption and all? Uh, Oblivious uh, technique is available, right? Uh, now, uh, blockchain itself, as well as uh, she said, you know, there are definitely challenges in terms of search, in terms of efficiency. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll take a pause and I'll ask a different question. What is the volume of data you use for testing? Go back to your slide where you uh, presented some stats. I think of 5,000 uh, rules. So, <clears throat> what is the infrastructure that we use here? We have used uh, AWS uh, RDS to store the data there for the cloud. And uh, here I've used uh, the uh, blockchain, already shown that. Uh, uh, see the result. This is an obstacle and 5,000 records in how much uh, you know, time. Uh, let's say I have to do a search of these 5,000 records. How efficiently it gives me the results? It's a quite efficient if you perform a search query there. It is in the blue line you see, see there. And there. It, is in, uh, seconds, it is in seconds. It is in seconds. It is in seconds. So, a few seconds, milliseconds. How many So, consider it's a four, six. And you also have an aspect where you do encryption. Hmm. How much time you you have not, or, or, I, or maybe I have missed? How do you do the decryption of the data when you have, because it doesn't really have to give the result back to the user, right? Yeah. So okay. cloud server will not decrypt anything. We'll simply whatever the uh, match is found, it simply sends the report there to the data user. Time is not the part of your uh, exactly. performance, right? No. This is just the fetching time you're trying to do. Decryption at the user level. So we have seen decryption it. might add overheads to your application, is it? Yes, ma'am. That's why we showed the communication overhead, how to communicate, uh, how much means uh, time required for communication here. Maybe I think there is, uh, there is a lot to, you know, uh, probably explore in this area. Uh, Maybe if you consider all the parameters for just one, one more thing that you have mentioned that like oblivious uh, then uh, fully on for encryption these are a uh, good technique but in terms of a huge calculation so if i perform some huge calculation over in the blockchain smart community it's not possible <laughs> means it's not possible the gas exhausted simply because a uh, huge amount of uh, operation mathematical operation is not done with the blockchain so you need a simple operation so that we can take the advantage of the blockchain very I, simple. I, I totally agree with you. Uh, that blockchain operations cannot be computation with that. Yes. And that's the, that's why I, I come back to my first question where I said that why don't you think of an off-chain implementation of some of the logic? You know, not every computation needs to be on the blockchain. Rather, we look at blockchain uh, more on the storage perspective. I, I don't think blockchain is mature enough to you know come up with uh, smart uh, search mechanisms because it is intrinsically sequential. So my question again is, why not think of some off-chain uh, you know, uh, implementation as far as logic is concerned and look at blockchain only as a storage? Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe that can be better that. performance. Uh, few and, works are going on I mean, for the uh, let's not, uh, Let's not, uh, you know, we will not attack. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm trying I'm to just that. trying to say that in this uh, group, you could think of that also as one of an option. Com compare your algorithm, or your framework with that kind of implementation and see uh, which is better, not only in terms of performance, as he said, but also in terms of, you know, uh, security. I think uh, maybe. Okay, ma'am, main basic concern is that uh, why not the offline part because of this uh, off-chain off off part. part. So off-chain part is the two things. First one is the issue that uh, we need to the uh, uh, trusted server or trusted party required in case of off-chain. Because if I send the data to the off-chain part, some calculation with some other server, then again some communication over it. And for the search case, if huge amount of data, it's now 5,000, it suddenly increases. If, uh, uh, 15,000, 20,000, we need to be check on that part. But we uh, concern about the trusted one, that that party is must be started. Means we have to either assume 
or we have to check for the different type of malicious attack that can be done over that. That's the research part. So first thing is the basic, what we started here is we, we present, like to present very simple that how can we take the advantage of the blockchain in case of the database, uh, encrypted database search. That is our main idea. Now we are okay. Sorry. Parts are two. Parts. So uh, let's take a step back. Uh, can you, in, in a layman term, explain me uh, which two parties are involved in this use case? Let's take one example. So you said, you know, you said, I'll right, take your point. Huh? You said data needs to be given to another party, right? Now, what data we are talking? The moment you think of blockchain, it is all about secure transactions, secure storage, immutability, so on and so forth. Now, in this case, which are the two parties involved here? Which uh, uh, third parties you thought about? Let's say uh, I will simplify it. A bank. It's a bank, right? Oh. A financial institution. Okay. Now, who is the second third party with whom you will implement this concept? Which are the two parties here? Like in case of bank, bank is a party which uh, give you assurance that your data is protected. Right. But okay. will, bank, will bank share this data with someone else? No, never. Like in an offline case, you for the, like, uh, offline or off chain case, if you perform a mission for comparing something, you have to sign the data. That is a thing. So if bank transfer it, that will be a means you have to assume that. Or either you have to search regarding this. Case. So that now here in case of my case, here are the two party involved. First, the data on a task is finished when it stores the data. See, if I am the bank, I will never share my data. It is confidential and secure data, right? If it is my credit card stored with you know uh, this bank, you know I will never allow you to share that credit card information with someone else, right? Because it is a secure information, my information. I will not consent here. In in uh, Europe, I think Doro uh, is here. In Europe, the rules are very, very strict. So the GDPR compliance and all other compliances so prohibit you to even share your birthday. Forget about the credit. Yes. Right? That's the reason I was saying better you think about the use case. So where you are going to apply this? If you if you can give me a best example, not in this forum. I'm I'm ready to you know look more into this, but I am really struggling to find out where I can apply this concept. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Mainly, uh, like whatever we have done the research, what we identify the many articles related to the convert, like MySQL is converted to the like, some giving a support there with the special hardware so that outsource data and we apply the same operation there and it's encrypted and it's want to and search and then provide the result. So some kind of basic general things we have tried to perform that we simply do whatever the records store, but these records are not, uh, these are records are relation data type. Like relation data is structured, not the unstructured. So that is the area we have concern. That is our uh, concern. I hope my try my best to explain the things. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think the conference is really helpful <laughs> with the audience and presenters like you, and of course with the session chair like Sam. So I really appreciate the enthusiasm. Moving ahead, we have the paper called as a blockchain solution for electronic healthcare record. And the presenters, I really request the presenters to be here. Uh, Pooja, Shri, Abhishek, Ayush, and uh, Rajvinder. Are they here a part of the conference? They'll be coming in some time. Yeah. Paper title 63 or authors here, no? Paper title. Paper number 63. Okay. Blockchain based user centric electronic health record management system. So I request the authors to be here on the dais. Anjali, Atharva, Yukta, and Lalakrishna Joshi. Right? Over to you guys. And all the very best.
Between they do the setting, uh, sir, to you, I have no idea what is your name. Request. Yeah, sir, uh, if I would have been there on the path, no? uh, I would have answered the question like the third party is going to be bank itself, in my opinion, because I do have a very much interest in a cloud security. My work is totally inclined towards it, and I have one international awards also for the same. <laughs> so, bank itself would implement the algorithm in their own domain and a horizon. Of course, you know, European and the culture we also have to follow. Then, uh, he has taken the example of Zomato so that, you know, salesperson interest it is okay to share the information to an extent, but not with the bank. So, either you could have altered the application or it could have been proper to your application like Zomato. And uh, I mean, I am just trying to answer why then the girls are getting prepared themselves, you know, because it's a canvas like everyone can put on their opinion, of course, with the respect, uh, you know, permission to our chair. I think each one of us have a way to look at the problem. Uh, and uh, each one of us conceive our own solution. We are trying to, uh, you know, uh, discuss about the uh, practicalities of the solution. And I think. Uh, one of us should defend ourselves. So, you need a fair thing is that very simple. We are sending a query, it isn't fully encrypted. And the Zamoto database, what we are doing that suppose uh, you are the either so we have understood everything, no, every aspect of your question. Uh, it would just answer to what sir has raised, and just to extend our one more point to it the encryption, like key size also was not mentioned anywhere. I'm key size of any, any encryption algorithm has to be a part of the presentation and of course going ahead uh, you have to compare those encryption algorithms with the existing system as madam and sir both have suggested you. I have already because, given the answer for that. Already thank you, in the thank you so much sir. Yeah. <laughs> I really appreciate that. So over to you Madam. A couple of minutes to begin. Person and such an interaction has to happen, you know, because if someone is going to criticize the point, the knowledge, what you know, all the intended audience are going to get is like anything, nowhere you'll get it. Some preparation time for their presentation. By then, I'll move to the next presenter. Uh, Nasreen, Suri Kumar, and uh, Meher Singh are here. Yeah. Okay. So, I request all of you to be here for the paper title Implementation of Blockchain Based Electronic Healthcare Record Using Java, Eclipse, and MongoDB. So, what do you mean?
everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank the IEEE Women section for giving me this opportunity uh, to present this. Uh, hello, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank IEEE Women section uh, for giving me this opportunity to present my paper in front of you all. And uh, uh, let's start by saying uh, about myself. I am Meher Nasri, a PhD student uh, from Mahatma Gandhi Central University, Motihari Bihar, and under the supervision of Dr. Sneha Kumar Singh, who is the assistant professor at Mahatma Gandhi Central University, Motihari Bihar. Now, uh, let's start with my paper is Implementation of Blockchain-Based Electronic Health Record System Using Java Eclipse and Mongoli. Uh, I have, um, we have divided uh, my presentation into five, seven sections. First, I will start with the introduction part uh, about the overview of blockchain. Next, uh, some literature survey I have done. And after that, data construction, proposed work with objectives, and performance analysis. And uh, at last, I will conclude uh, with some references. Now, let's just start with the introduction part. A blockchain, as we know, that blockchain is a decentralized and used as a public ledger. It records the transactions and tracks the assets. Blockchain provides immutability of the records because of its decentralized features. And in this figure, you can see that uh, there is a blockchain with all the uh, in healthcare sectors, all the healthcare providers, or patients, doctors, or lab results. Everything can be uh, connected to the blockchain. They can be the node in that part. They can share their data. Uh, there is no need to carry the um, reports to the doctor. Uh, it, everything will be available on blockchain. Next, uh, blockchain uses the concept of cryptography. Uh, cryptography uh, makes the blockchain secure. For the security purpose, it, this uh, is used. Um, and it provides better um, health records and patient records security. Next, uh, blockchain is the comprehensive system for packaging data in a form that can be trusted since specific users can be updated. We can, blockchain is, um, provides immutability. We cannot change the data. Whatever data or patient records are stored on blockchain cannot be altered or changed. Uh, next, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, in 2008, he has uh, developed the concept of blockchain. Mm, literally, uh, um, at first, he has used the concept of block and chain separately, but uh, by 2016, he mixed the block and chain and named it as blockchain. Next, these are the literature surveys I have done about the electronic health records, how they are stored, um, how all the patient records are stored in digital format. There is no need to carry the uh, lab reports or doctor's reports to the hospitals or to any doctors. Or if a patient can, um, wants to um, move to another doctor or another hospital, they can um, uh, take their data available from the blockchain. They can share the data and, uh, so that they can uh, be, uh, so that they can be uh, treated uh, more uh, easily. Now next in second part, a data preservation system for EHR is also designed. They have used the concept, uh, this concept on Ethereum platform, and uh, a smart contract-based framework is also proposed where patients records lab, uh, lab results, doctors' advice, all these are stored in the blockchain in the form of blocks. After that, uh, IPFS file system is used to store the uh, EHRs, and uh, an algorithm for EHR sharing system is uh, also used to store on the platform of Hyperledger fabric. So these are the literature surveys. Uh, apart from this, I have also mentioned some more in my paper, but here only these uh, ones are there. Next, data construction. I have used these data. Uh, these data are stored uh, in a file and that file is accessed from MongoDB and from MongoDB it is uh, accessed to the Java Eclipse and then these uh, all the reports are stored in the docs in the form of uh, blocks in blockchain. 
the following table shows that how the HRs are stored, unique ID of a patient, full name of the patient, gender, age, and admission type ID that uh, how the patient is admitted by accident or by emergency or which type of uh, um, admission. And the discharge disposition ID is also there that how they are dis discharged and how many days they are stored, uh, they are in the hospital and after that insulin diabetes met i have used the 1000 records of diabetic medical patient uh, i have used a dummy data here next is the proposed work or i can say that here we have used the objectives also that uh, we have focused on the ehrs of the blockchain technology so that <laughs> how um, we cannot use the traditional EHR system and we will use the digital EHR system to store the electronic records of the patients. And its um, main purpose is to convert the patient's medical chart into digital document. Uh, this gives the EHR system access to an integrated blockchain-based solution that is scalable and secure. Data encrypted using blockchain cannot be changed or deleted as I mentioned earlier that they are immutable. Uh, this makes the blockchain effect, extremely effective in securing the data. Next to here is a flowchart that I have used. First of all, uh, whenever we want to store the uh, reports in the blockchain, it creates a genesis block. The very first block of the blockchain is called genesis block. And all the transactions that have been made, these are stored in the genesis block. And they are stored, connected. Each block is connected by the hash value each block stores the previous hash value as uh, i have said that genesis block is the very first block so it does not contain any previous hash value that hash value will be zero and after that whenever a new transaction comes it is stored uh, again in the form of new block and also i have mentioned that uh, here i have checked that whether this blockchain is valid or not uh, if it is valid then it is uh, it will display true or it will display false in this flowchart. Now, hash acts as a unique identifier so that every data can be stored in the form of a hash value. Next is uh, MongoDB contains the EHR, and that EHR is accessed from MongoDB through Java Eclipse to the uh, blockchain. Uh, in this figure, you can see that uh, these are the uh, data of patient, age, admission type, ID, gender, full name, all of these are here. And then MongoDB access those data. And then through Java Eclipse, it is accessed and it is stored in blockchain where each blocks are divided into uh, some parts. Where each block contains block header, timestamp, uh, previous hash value, its own hash value. And lastly, it also contains the transactions. Those, are, those have been made. And all the blocks are linked with the hash value. These are the algorithms that I've used uh, here. Block algorithm on block generation. Uh, how to how the blocks are created. Here uh, there's a add block method, which contains the mine block method. Uh, how the block will be mined, and then uh, for mining, I've used apply SHA two fifty six algorithm. Uh, after that, to add previous hash to the new block, and then new block will be added to the blockchain. And in second algorithm, uh, hash generation is done using proof of work concept. This is a concept a consensus mechanism that I've used here. Uh, and the nonce value is zero, and apply SHA256 algorithm is used. For that, I've also created here mind block function. And nonce value after that it increases and then uh, it is stored in the blockchain. Next one is algorithm on checking the validity of blockchain. How well check the validity of the blockchain? So for that I have created here is chain valid method and uh, it is checking that if not block dot hash is equal to the not calculated hash. It will return false, and if the uh, hash value equals to the previous hash, it will also return the hash false value. And uh, next, at last, is the algorithm code. Algorithm on the creation of blockchain using EHR. 
Here I have set the difficulty value of 4. A patient record is accessed from MongoDB and then it is stored in the blockchain using blockchain with admin. admin. For performance analysis, I have used um, Java programming language with the Eclipse ID. <laughs> Java programming language is used for its high scalability and portability. In this work, we have met the connectivity with Mongo database. Uh, to MongoDB database to access the reports of patients. As we know that MongoDB is a uh, noise no SQL database where all the database are not stored in tabular form, it is stored in the form of uh, non tabular values so that we can store any uh, types of uh, values there. And the computing environment I've used is uh, Intel Core i3 1005 Drupal uh, 1.20 GH processor 12 GB memory and the first 10 operating system. Experiment one here, uh, this is the output how the EHRs has, are stored in MongoDB. Each record in MongoDB is uh, called a document and each columns are set as scores. So by using the query db.scores pretty, we can see this output. This is the output of a patient with a unique ID and full name, gender, age, admission type, the stars, disposition ID, time in hospital, it's the that it is met or readmitted or not. These are the records of the patient. Here in this figure, I have shown the diabetic records of 1000 patients that are accessed from MongoDB and stored in the blockchain in the forms of block. And it is displayed all the timestamp and hash value. And after that, it is also showing that block might successfully. And execution time is there, how much time it has taken to create one block. And I have also shown the performance uh, by the graph. These are the experiments that I have made. Number of patient records, uh, 0 to 1000 records are there. Uh, we are seeing that uh, in creating to 200 records, how much time it is taking for creating one block. And next one is, uh, this is number of patient records. Uh, here, um, one to 200 is showing that it takes 120 nanoseconds. And these are in uh, nanoseconds, uh, 120 nanoseconds in a second. But at last, uh, when we see that 1,000, 1, it should be 600, but it is 539. So we can see that uh, more blocks, when more blocks are getting that it can take less time. So uh, this is also a very important uh, point that uh, um, it is also taking so much time, but uh, in future my scope is to work on the speed of blockchain so that we can store more data in very less amount of time in the blockchain. At last, this is the conclusion. In this, uh, I worked, uh, created EHR uh, to store the digital data in unlike traditional systems uh, using Java Eclipse and MongoDB. And the connectivity is created between Java Eclipse and MongoDB to access the records from MongoDB database. And through for work on success mechanisms, I have used for the security and integrity purpose. And uh, these experiments, as I've said that uh, when more records are added, then it takes less time to play records. So these are the references I have used. Thank you.
Thank you. Now you are open to ask any question. I'm happy to answer. Okay, Masreen, uh, the topic again <coughs> is very close to my heart because blockchain in healthcare is, uh, you know, the need of the time. I think uh, even during the talks that we had, this was one of the areas that was emphasized a lot by most of the experts. So the topic is great. Um, I would like to understand, you are speaking more on, you know, um, the title says you do it, you're using Java, Eclipse and Nobody. So you are very, uh, you know, you're very rigid with in terms of your front end and a back end. That is what I found. And you're trying to put blockchain as uh, you know, one of the main highlights of your work. Um, you haven't mentioned about the blockchain platform that you have used, whether it's yes. Ethereum. That I have not used any platform yet. Exactly. So yes. It's a simulation that yeah. you have done. I'm going to work uh, on the speed of the blockchain by using Hyperledger Fabric in future. So in this, I have not used. I have simply created a basic blockchain, how it is created and how it can be uh, used to store the reports of the patient. So my first question is, why did you feel of you know, creating your blockchain or you were simulating a blockchain when you already have uh, you know, uh, some of the experimental level blockchain platforms in place? Also the interfaces, IDs, tools are much simpler. Uh, so why did you feel the need of you know working around the blockchain parameters? You talked about... Um, uh, patient records and trying to see the block creation time. So I think you are talking more on the block creation time, uh, which is much more hard coded in most of the blockchain platforms. So I wanted to understand why did you feel the need to play around these parameters? Um, as you know, that blockchain is a distributed the ledger system uses distributed ledger system. It is decentralized. Data can be available to each of the patients, those are committed to that hospital. They don't need to go to the hospital and take their reports and leave whenever they want to change the hospital, change the doctor. Or in I case of I emergency, like my question says, does your further research talk about creating your own blockchain platform, which is comparable to uh, the ones that are already existing? Because you're working around those parameters, which are very uh, fundamental. <coughs> so I would like to understand whether you found that Ethereum was not suitable for this kind of application. Hyperledger Fabric was not suitable for this kind of application. Oda not being suitable for whatever. So is that the part of your future research? Is that no, it's not like that. My future work is uh, I have to minimize the attribute latency with all uh, efficiency of the plot so that uh, it can be used easily and it can store a large amount of data in very less time. So how do you plan to do that with the patient records? You talked about the block size, you talked about the block time. Patient records is using proof of work. So proof of work is inherently uh, going to affect the throughput of the system. So why not work on the consensus mechanism rather than you know creating your own blockchain? That's my submission. It's literally a doubtful about that part. So that is one thing. Maybe uh, you have more questions for the audience out there. The second question is you are talking about EHR records. But uh, I feel that when you create EHR records on MongoDB, there are some EHR standards which you must find out. Have you uh, gone through some of the EHR standards? For example, Open EHR uh, or FHI. These are some of the EHR standards in which the EHRs need to be stored for becoming compliant and uh, to all the standards that are let down. Uh, he just spoke of GDPR for uh, when uh, Parth, uh, Parth Sarthi was uh, you know, talking about, he talked about GDPR. So most of these EHR standards have to be complied. So any study done on the EHR standards or are the EHR stored in a raw format in the media? So this is no, I have not uh, used all those things. Uh, simple, I have created a blockchain. Uh, how it can store the reports in digital form. 
That's all from my side. Thank you for your questions. Audience, yeah, anyone, any question? Yes, sir, we are waiting for you. <laughs> As the man said, I think it's a very nice topic and it's actually the need of the time. And uh, especially uh, in uh, regions like US, uh, Europe, um, this, this has uh, very high importance. The only aspects I would want to tell you that what the man mm -hmm. says, one is you need to also understand what all are the real world uh, scenarios or uh, limitations or uh, constraints. Uh, <clears throat> I think the common suggestion maybe uh, even Parath and others, his topic was very nice. Uh, in fact, the only aspect I would suggest to be that all of you guys, you have to first put the real world scenario in front of you. Do a research on the problem first. You know? So whenever we are trying to implement a solution, what are you trying to do? Right? Uh, you are basically trying to solve a problem. Right? If you don't know the problem, the solution that you are going to provide will be up. Right? So, uh, she rightly pointed, there are standards available in US. Uh, EHR record, we have to store, there are certain standards and norms that are supposed to be followed. If you don't store the data in that particular form, they call it as a, the way of exchange of data. Right? So if one hospital has to communicate with a second hospital in the US or an insurance company in the US or a doctor for that matter, that standard has to be maintained. Otherwise, a doctor prescribing for a, you know flu and you know the insurance company treating it as something else. It is different. So starting from understanding the actual real world problem that you are trying to solve, start from there. Analyze the problem to a larger extent. You know, you are, don't look at this as if you are trying to create a POC. The moment you think about it as a POC, your scope is limited. You know, another example I would say when you are trying to use Mongo here, right? I'll give you just one simple example. I was standing in front of Dinana. Every two minutes, there was one ambulance coming. What it means. How much data is getting generated every every minute? Right? Yes. If that is the case, will your MongoDB hold there? So when you present to man, you know what you should have probably done is that you, know, you say that for POC purposes, I have taken Java and Mongo, you know, but if you have to implement it in a real world, I would have chosen XYZ. You know. So that is what is required. Do in-depth research on the problem first. Understand the volume of data, understand the boundary conditions, yes. right? Uh, so, in case of PARP, I would say it could be between uh, uh, insurance providers and banks. It could be between, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, the agencies, government agencies, which are uh, providing the approvals for that property to be mortgaged. So, PARP, you know, I think that's what I wanted to relate, right? No, so, only authorized. <laughs> So it is all about, you know, first putting forward the real world challenge, then understanding all the boundary conditions, then putting together a solution which will actually meet the needs. Don't look at it as a POC. If you do that, whatever you are proposing here will come up to the mark. Anyways, I think the uh, whatever uh, topic you have chosen, the best topic. And even the solution that you have came up with, uh, barring the technology part of it, you know, barring the uh, boundary conditions, everything is nice. Just to add to here, uh, there are three APIs available to actually collect the EHR data. So you can just Google it and find it and subscribe it. They give it for one month for free. Thank you, sir. And, uh, you can use those uh, understand the standards. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your suggestion. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. We have actually after my yoga and application with us for the paper title blockchain based user centric electronic health record management system. So, the goal to 
pupils. Girls are requested to please stick to the time period. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, so, hello, good uh, afternoon, everyone. I am Yukta Mole, and I am uh, along with my uh, group member, Anjali Mutra. Uh, and we are here to present our final year project uh, research paper, which is titled as uh, Object Based User Centric Electronic Health Record Management System. So, first of all, I would like to tell you all why we chose this topic uh, for our final year project. Um, uh, we wanted to actually work on new technology along with uh, the technology that we have worked before in uh, three years of the engineering. So, we chose blockchain along with AI and um, IoT. And uh, another thing why this industry, why health, uh, healthcare management, it's that we wanted to integrate. Uh, more than one technology uh, because uh, there has been limited number of resources on this um, integration. Uh, that's why we uh, chose these three uh, technologies to work with. Uh, so the content for the upcoming slides is abstract introduction, literature review, methodology, uh, results and conclusion. Starting with abstract. Um, Blockchain uh, has exploited most num is now exploiting most number of uh, industries, including banking industry or um, what else, insurance industry. Uh, and blockchain is now being uh, adopted by healthcare industry as well uh, to you know uh, solve the challenges uh, such as privacy and security problems uh, of the patients' uh, data. Uh, now in uh, in the traditional uh, in traditional healthcare system, what happens is the uh, patient is not the owner of his own uh, data, uh, and uh, the large number of volumes that have been created. Okay, since uh, there is tremendous amount of uh, healthcare data that uh, is created. Uh, is scattered around, around many uh, multiple number of medical institutions uh, where the there is track, loss of track and so hence we proposed a patient centric model which includes another facilities like uh, uh, heart disease prediction and uh, and monitoring of heart disease. So, yeah. uh, so our healthcare management system uh, is based on blockchain. We used uh, hyperledger, uh, hyperledger blockchain, which is permission based. Uh, in this uh, blockchain, what happens is the members can uh, the the data that is uh, present in the uh, network is transparent, and uh, the members can uh, see it. So our first objective was to uh, handle the EHRs, uh, to store it, to access them, and easily share it uh, along the network. Um, and then with this EHRs, what we, what we planned on doing is we wanted to pass, scan these EHRs uh, in the AI model so that uh, we can predict if the patient has uh, heart disease or not. Um, yeah. so, so the literature survey. Uh, this, is the, this is one of the resources that we um, record, which is major using blockchain for medical data access and permission management. So this is like uh, this is the resource that uh, that gave us the part to uh, go through our uh, the uh, model. Uh, here uh, the authors uh, 
proposed a decentralized management system uh, which which was handling EHRs and uh, here they used a crypto, cryptographic hash system and in our system we used SHA 256 to uh, track the uh, changes that are happening so that uh, we can ensure the data uh, the data that is being saved on the blockchain is immutable uh, and here these, uh, the authors used Ethereum smart contracts uh, and we have created chain codes, uh, chain codes in Hyperledger uh, fabric. So consensual management <clears throat> is actually a paper which we can consider as a base paper. The network that we have built is very similar to this one. Uh, and then we integrated a few things, added a few additional features to make the system better. So I'll be talking about this uh, during the methodology, since I said it's similar, so. Uh, yeah. And I have a paper. Uh, with this uh, paper, the authors proposed. Exactly. What is your contribution? Okay. I would like to hear that. Um, so this is architecture diagram of a system. Uh, we have three hospital organizations. Now, why did we use Hyperledger Fabric? With Ethereum, it's a public blockchain. Anyone can join. We wanted permission blockchain. Why? Because even though we want the system to be transparent, we still don't want to compromise on the privacy of the data. We want to retain the privacy while making sure that everything is transparent. That's why we chose Hyperledger Fabric. Um, so in our system, we have three hospital organizations and one patient organization. Now, each hospital organization can have any number of peers. In our system, hospital one has one peer, one C, and one order, and uh, the rest of the uh, hospital organization has one peer each. We can add, depending on the uh, yeah, So, uh, we have a separate patient organization. Now, why this? That's a patient. A patient is supposed and ruby right now, and the patient doesn't like the system that the patient wants to switch. Now the patient needs EHRs to switch the doctor to go to some other organization. Now, of course, so we wouldn't want the patient to go. So look, the inconvenience that's caused that the patient has to suffer a lot to get access to his or her own EHR. That's why in our system, the patient is in control of his or her EHR. Uh, so uh, we have an organization admin because uh, although it's permission, we need someone to verify that the person is claiming, uh, the person is the person who he or she is claiming to be. So uh, organization admin has rights of either accepting or declining the request. It's similar to Instagram request. Now for verification purpose, the organization admin can use different ID proofs like PAN card, Adha card to make sure that the person is uh, actually the person he or she is claiming to be. So patient and doctor both need uh, access from organization at them. So the doctor will be uh, joining the hospital organization, either one of them or two of them, depending on the necessity, and the patient will be joining uh, patient organization. So once the patient is there in the organization and doctors have joined the organization, what happens next? So uh, suppose there's a new user, a new user wants to enter the network. So our uh, backend was uh, built using Notice. There's authentication that due to hashing algorithm is going to check. If the user is new user, uh, the admin is going to either accept the request. So if the admin accepts the request, uh, CA will assign a new identity to the user and a wallet will be generated. Without this wallet, the person can't enter the network. So once the person is inside the network, the person needs to choose channel on the network. In our case, we have just one channel, DHMS channel, which is decentralized healthcare management system channel. Now there will be several channels. This is not really limited to this one application. So uh, once the person has <coughs> joined the DHMS channel, uh, the user can connect to the smart contracts, which in our case we have to use it on chain board since we have used hyperledger fabric. So chain codes are very similar to smart contracts. They are technically the implementation or we can say the execution of the program on our network. So we have two chain codes. One is consent management, one is storage management. So uh, we'll get back to these after I actually uh, explain the rights that patient and doctors have. So we know organization admins that would grant uh, the request, accept or decline it. Patient can either grant or revoke the access to his or her EHR. 
Suppose uh, there is a patient named Ramesh. Ramesh has several EHRs. Now there is a doctor who wants to access his EHR. The doctor is Ramesh's doctor. So the doctor would have to send request to uh, Ramesh and Ramesh, uh, Ramesh will grant request. Now in our case, we have a uh, time period based request. So uh, Ramesh can decide, okay, I want the request to be uh, valid for 10 days. After 10 days, the doctor can't access my HR again. Uh, the second uh, thing here is the patient can query metadata. So in our case, we have used blockchain to store the metadata. Now, we the volume of the data is massive. It's healthcare sector. So we have used off-chain storage along with blockchain to store the entire data, including the metadata. So uh, the patient can query the metadata, can also fetch the full EHR uh, using the off-chain storage. The hash values need to match. Uh, uh, what types of doctors have now? They can create EHRs. Depending on the patients they have, they can create EHRs for their specific patients. They can request EHR. Once they've created the EHR, they have no access to that EHR. So if they want to access that EHR again, they need uh, they need the patient to accept that request. Now the doctor can predict heart disease. Now we don't want patients to do this because patients have no idea about uh, things that actually go on in the healthcare sector. So we want the doctor to do that. Uh, so patient doesn't have an option of prediction. We also want the doctor to actually get access to metadata. Now what metadata includes is patient ID, record ID, record title, and the time and date. That's all uh, the data is going to be there in uh, metadata of the record. The doctor can also fetch full EHR. Now this is related to request EHR. The doctor will request EHR, fetch the entire EHR, use it for suppose tracking the entire progress and then creating a new HR and once the uh, <coughs> uh, once the access is uh, denied the doctor won't access it. So now we'll get back to chain rules. Consent management has a few functions uh, like grant yeah like uh, grant the access. Patient will grant the access to the doctors. Now patient thinks that some suspicious activity is going on. This organization can't be trusted anymore. The patient can revoke the access anytime, even before the time period that the patient had specified before. Uh, the, uh, the another function is actually uh, actually getting the checking the uh, access status of the uh, EHR that is requested. It will set the value to true or false, and it will get the access status, and then it will be sent to the uh, backend. If it's accepted, then then uh, the EHR will be shared. EHR storage manager is more like doctor using it. We have create EHR function there for creating EHR and then putting it on uh, storage. Now we can query EHR, the doctor can query EHR using either uh, date, either record ID, or using patient ID. Now suppose doctor has many patients and one patient has several multiple records. So there's a function for querying multiple records of single patient. Or the doctor can also query one EHR of single patient, depending on the requirement. Uh, now, we have Node.js application on backend. We have used Node Prime SDK for connecting the blockchain network to our backend. And uh, the gateway I mentioned, the wallet CN, that's the gateway part. The user needs access to the network. So, we have used Mongo for blockchain storage. So, uh, we have now two more parts, which is uh, machine learning, two machine learning models we have, and one IoT model. So what first machine learning model is for disease prediction. Second machine learning model is for pseudo real-time monitoring. Now this is connected to IoT. First one will be explained by Yukta further in the next slide. I'll explain the IoT part after she explains it. So for the machine learning model, uh, which is the hard disease prediction, uh, we used a data set called cardiovascular data set, which has like 70,000 instances. Uh, what we did on this data set is, uh, we first pre-processed uh, the data set, which included like uh, handling the missing value, then uh, uh, handling the outliers. Then when the clean data was prepared, we split that data set into like 80% and 20%, 80% for training and 20% for testing. And with this uh, training data set, what, um, what I did was uh, I compared uh, most of the machine learning models to find out which one uh, Perform better. So here, uh, gradient boosting performed uh, the best with an accuracy of 74.7%. Now, the strained uh, machine learning model uh, 
further i hyper tune hyper parameter tune the uh, gradient boosting algorithm which uh, actually raised the previous uh, accuracy to 74.8 percent which was like uh, more or like best one uh, which we have got uh, compared to other people's uh, accuracy so uh, now this uh, the train model was integrated with Node.js, our backend code with the help of Joblet. Now, whenever uh, we passed uh, an EHR, this model scanned that EHR. Uh, this EHR could be like in any text format, like any format. It could be Word, it could be PDF, or it could be um, simple text uh, yeah, file. So whenever our model scanned this uh, uh, file, it would uh, catch the uh, required data from the EHR and then it will pass that uh, data to the train model and that uh, train model will calculate if uh, the patient has uh, heart disease or not. Uh, so yeah, it's the result analysis. I'll uh, like to mention something she hasn't mentioned. Now, 74.7, we all might have a question. Is this accuracy really good enough? So, this is so by far the best accuracy that anyone has got on this data set after hyperparameter tuning. Now, if you want to raise it further, since we had time constraint, we didn't really work on that factor, so that's in this project. But if you want to raise it further, we might use the uh, concept of multiple dimensional data. So, uh, I'll explain the RUD part. How it works is we have a uh, and a similar to IoT device, due to budget issues, we couldn't really get a hold of an actual watch. But this is similar to Apple Watch, if you all know. What it does is, it takes, it tracks our heart rate for a certain period of time. And then, uh, after tracking it for a certain period of time, it tells us if we have a risk of arrhythmia and how severe it is. Now, there are several uh, levels of arrhythmia. How severe it is? Do you really need to go and visit a doctor? So that's what we do. But in our case, we have used database uh, MID PIH, which is annotated ECG signals to or no cardiologists have actually annotated this database. Now we can actually use uh, a sensor like Apple Watch if we have uh, if we get access to these uh, technologies. So um, the IoT device, similar to IoT device, will send publish the data. We have used high MQ amplitude profile as a server, as a, as a medium for actually sending it. Uh, our uh, backend will uh, access it, it will authenticate if the source is valid, and then uh, it will further send it to the machine learning model, which is called in the backend using job. We have loaded the model set. So it will predict the blockchain. Hmm? How do you correlate this? IoT part? Blockchain. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the thing is, right now, uh, the blockchain is just storing the metadata from the IoT. So if there are any changes, we would know. So uh, another question we might have here is the system is transparent and it's, uh, we have made sure that uh, there are no privacy concerns and uh, the data ownership is retained here. But then we have also used off-chain storage. Now what if the servers are hacked? What are we going to do? Is the data reliable? Now uh, to solve this issue, we can use IPFS uh, instead of off-chain storage. And also even right now it's reliable. It might be hacked, there might be changes, the data might be leaked, it could be used. But we will still know that the data isn't reliable anymore, the changes can be tracked since everything is tracked. We are using blockchain. So uh, this is our system. Great. A broad scope of work. Uh, and I would congratulate you more on the A part of your work blockchain based uh, i think you, you took most of the ideas from your base paper yeah that, that's, a, the that, network. that's a excellent paper even rhetoric is very good so uh, the consent management part as of now is uh, uh, a very important thing that ehr system in blockchain should talk about and uh, you have tried to touch upon effectively my only question to you is uh, you could, you know, focus more on the blockchain part. ML and IoT could be set aside for a minute because uh, my focus is on the A part. And that suits the uh, conference uh, just also. So I would talk about, again, the same question that I asked Masreen. You should focus more on the EHR standards. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you want to make the system actually practical, which you're very near to, uh, you should be 
talking about the EHR standards, which make your system interoperable also, because you're talking about three hospitals yeah. talking to each other. Yeah. Uh, necessarily, their standards are not same. The way uh, Dinanath stores the record, it's, it's altogether different from the way Sanjeevni stores, even though their trust bodies, trusty bodies are same. But, uh, you know, this interoperability issues could be handled very effectively with uh, the open EHR standards or FHR standards, the lots of standards. Actually, so maybe we uh, skip that part. So uh, that. Yeah, yeah, we have mm -hmm. used OCR. So how OCR works is you have a document and you have a certain order. It looks for those key value pairs and then it has a set of key value pairs that the ML model is going to follow. ML model doesn't understand the order. So the OCR is going to make sure that everything is in order. So even if the format is different, even if there are two columns here, and even if uh, maybe the data here is on first page and half of the data is on the second page, maybe half of the data is missing. So OCR is going to make sure that everything is in order, everything is in place before actually sending it to so machine. There is some order. internal standardization which is done by the OCR technique and all the records are standardized in a particular form. No, there are three to four formats that we have used. So the OCR is trained. OCR is again our machine learning. We have used algorithms to train the OCR. OCR is trained for four to five formats. And then it can extract it. So what depending, uh, in one format we have everything, uh, just like a simple text file, but it's an image format. We have image format, so it's extracting it uh, in one line. For instance, we have the address. You talk then about the structure. Uh -huh. uh, what I'm trying to talk, talk about is the standards in which the EHRs are used, maintained. So. Uh, uh, you can just go back and check out what open mm -hmm. EHR and okay. HR standards okay. are. They are not talking only about the storage, the uh, you know extraction mm -hmm. model. They are the way the data is represented. Okay. Uh, so there is a mechanism. There's a specific way through which patient ID is created. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a specific way through which the treatment of uh, incremental treatment of the patient is seen. Yeah. So what if he visits the doctor today and three days mm -hmm. there is some uh, you know follow up done? Mm -hmm. So there is a link between these two records. Mm -hmm. So that standard is open EHR and FHR. Mm -hmm. Just have a look at it yeah, and yes, that yes. that might make your solution much more mm -hmm. acceptable and uh, I think a very good contribution. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, we'll explore it that much. Sure, sure, sure. You have answered all the queries of the audience by yourself. So no, we no, really no. congratulate you. <laughs> great job. Great job. Thank you. A bit scholars also. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Good. 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 And who's your guide actually? You did not mention his name. Professor Dipti Sir. Yeah. 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 Thank you, girls. So we'll break, break here for lunch and uh, by 2.30, we'll be okay. 2.30, we'll and be okay. Other session. By 2.30, we'll be back. Here. And the same hall. And uh, your lunch is organized at the outside of the hall, the inauguration hall, banquet hall, right? Before that, uh, there's a cell, uh, felicitation ceremony. I will hand it over to Rashmi, coordinator for today. Hello everyone. So I would like to now request uh, Dr. Amar Bhutsari, Secretary IEEE Computer Society Pune Chapter, to felicitate uh, Dr. Priya Vese, Professor and Head, Head of Department of Artificial Intelligence and Data Science at uh, Devai Patil with their bit. Very well coordinated. Now, I would like to request Amar sir to again uh, felicitate Dr. Shraddha Pansalkar Nam, Professor Head, head Pansalkar Nam, Professor Head.
कंप्यूटर साइंस इंजीनियरिंग एम आई टी सी ओ एम आई टी ए डी टी यूनिवर्सिटी लीड ब्लॉक चेन सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस सर्टिफाइड ब्लॉक चेन प्रोफेशनल एंड ट्रेनर आर सेशन चेयर Thank you, participants. Thank you. We break here. Very good papers. Uh, very good uh, uh, feedback, and uh, uh, I'm very happy to see the way uh, students have worked. And congratulations to each one of you. I enjoyed the session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.